At National Geographic headquarters today is the Executive Director of the International League of Conservation Photographers, Christina Mittermeier. Christina, you've just come back from the World Wilderness Conference in Mexico, and you have thoughts and a resolution was passed about the role of conservation photography in conservation. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened there and what that all means? Yes, it's, it was a fantastic meeting. You know, these international congresses are usually attended only by uh, scientists, conservationists, uh, people in government positions. But the World Wilderness Congress invites all members of society to participate. So we had a huge contingency of photographers come and do a series of presentations. We had a symposium, and we actually passed a resolution to the Congress. Now, these resolutions are important because they've become part of the permanent record of Congress. And, and the resolution speaks about the need to increase funding for communications if we want to be effective in conservation. And what exactly is the role of photography in conservation as you see it? How do you get the message out and what successes have you already had? The role of photography in conservation is evolving and it's becoming apparent that it has uh, various roles to play. Number one, it's a convener. Uh, we have found that when you have a symposium, when you have an exhibit, you can bring important people that become part of an influential audience uh, that can then pass on messages. Everybody's a photographer. Everybody loves images. So having exhibits that actually bring people together to talk about important issues is an, it's an important part of conservation photography. But also we want to be able to bear witness and to bring these messages back to the media. Uh, so photography can play a huge role in conservation and we're just beginning to tap into it. Now you've already done some remarkable work with the raves. Can you tell us about those and the successes of those? Yeah, the rave is actually evolving very rapidly. Uh, we have just finished our seventh rave in the Yucatan Peninsula. This one was the largest that we've done up to date. We had 32 photographers on the ground for 16 weeks. And these photographers documented everything from the development of tourism to underwater caves and cenotes to the uh, giant whale sharks up the northern coast of Yucatan. And the idea was to produce a body of work that will inform Mexican authorities about development in the Yucatan. We are producing a 30 minute uh, piece with uh, CNN and Espanol. Uh, 30 million viewers will see this piece. So we're hopefully uh, going to do something really influential with it. You have also spread the word through a number of books that the photographers have been involved in. Talk a little bit about some of those and the newest one. Uh, this is a very exciting initiative. We are sponsored by a large cement company uh, out of Mexico called Cemex. It's the largest building company in the world. And uh, Cemex does something that very few corporations do, and that is to finance communications for conservation. So every year they sponsor a book. Last year they, they did with us uh, Climate for Life, which was done in partnership with Conservation International. It talks about the important role of healthy ecosystems in mitigating climate change and in particular the role of forests. Um, uh, they emit 20% of emissions when they're degraded or burned, so they're a natural solution for climate change. Uh, but it also talks about the role of oceans and fresh water and tipping points like the permafrost melting. Uh, this book is going to be presented at the uh, upcoming COP15 in Copenhagen. Uh, we have an exhibit coming up. We have a VIP reception with heads of states and ministers and important people that are in a position of making decisions. And it's a very exciting book. I understand you've also been on Capitol Hill with this book and the work. What has been the reception there? Well, the book is accompanied by a piece, a multimedia piece and an exhibit that's been traveling all over the United States and the world. Uh, the exhibit has been uh, to the California Academy of Sciences, but also has been shown in Tokyo and Japan and Lima and Peru and Mexico City. And last week it was uh, taken to Capitol Hill where we were um, invited to do a reception with several members of Congress and the, and the, the House and, and Senate. And it's an interesting way of uh, delivering some of these key messages using beautiful photography as the anchor. How would you like ordinary photographers to be involved in your good work? One of the things that we try to do at the ILCP is use the talent and the persona of the photographers that are members to influence the, the troves of wonderful amateur photographers out there. We would like to infect everybody with a sense of purpose for their imagery. We all have a role to play. We can all bear witness to what's happening to our beautiful planet. Christina, can you tell us about this new book, The Wealth of Nature? Yes, I can. The Wealth of Nature is our newest book. It just came out last week. We launched it at the 9th World Wilderness Congress, and it was done in partnership with the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, and CI. And this book is interesting because it talks about the value of healthy ecosystems to benefit both biodiversity and human uh, well-being. Um, things like clean water or fresh air, uh, medicines, products from the forest, all these things that Mother Nature delivers to us free of charge as long as we conserve healthy ecosystems. It's very beautiful. So apart from the beauty of the photographs, there's practical information to inspire people? 
We would like every one of our books to become a blueprint for decision makers. Uh, these books are written by scientists with very concrete solutions and, and steps that can be taken to uh, make sure that biodiversity is accounted for in uh, national financial systems. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about A Climate for Life. Well, A Climate for Life, it's, um, it's, it tries to be a very positive book full of solutions for how do we mitigate climate change as, as we go forward. It talks about the role of healthy forests and uh, mitigating uh, emissions from deforestation and, uh, and the degradation of ecosystems. And it also talks about the role of oceans, for example, how to mitigate acidification, the loss of coral reefs, things like what's going to happen to fresh water with melting glaciers. But it tries to keep it to a positive message. Biodiversity can be a huge part of the solution when we talk about climate change. We just have to make sure that the message gets to the world leaders that are going to be meeting in Copenhagen next month. Now, one of the concerns I've heard about is that through paying countries to conserve their forests, we might not be focusing on biodiversity as much as we should. Do you have any thoughts about that, that we might be going for the easy maintenance of forests and overlooking the very real hotspots of well, that's been one of the concerns, and uh, there's several mechanisms uh, by which we're, we're trying to mitigate that from happening. I think the bigger danger is not doing anything at all, just uh, going forward without taking forest into account like we have done so far. Uh, I think any step that we make in that direction is going to be positive, and we can iron out the details as we go.